all right guys welcome back i um i was thinking after my last video of getting the dakota back on the road and putting it right to the test pulling a car i probably should have done a video of just the truck driving itself first because i know there's quite a bit of feedback on how much it was struggling to do pulling a car but i never really designed it to do that and um, it's honestly working phenomenally with this new turbo and just running it about 26 pounds of boost. It really does everything I want it to do. And so I just wanted to get some ride along videos and stuff. Um, as is not trying to pull three times what the engine was designed for. So... Um, just maybe a quick overview of the truck if you haven't watched any of the previous videos. This is a 2001 um, Dodge Dakota four-door. I think factory weight on this thing is about 4,500 pounds. And obviously this thing has been one ton solid axle swapped. It's got a Dana 60 in the front, Dana 80 in the rear and uh dodge axles yeah and pretty much dodge suspension though so with the axles and even taking out the v8 with this thing fully set up it's about 5400 pounds now so it's a pretty heavy truck it's pretty much a full-size truck as far as weight goes and this thing is sitting about 14 inches higher than the dakota did from the factory so it is a big big truck um those are a metric 18 inch wheel and tire they measured almost 36 inches tall so they're they're a big tire as well it's got 513 gears in it um locker in the rear not that that affects much for normal driving and then um just popping the hood here it has a 2001 alh TDI engine, um, the turbo, this new turbo that I fitted on here is a GTC 1549, which is the stock turbo on about a 2015 TDI. Um, I converted it to an electronic actuator there, but other than that, it's got 260 injectors running probably 180 horsepower tune. Um, somewhere close to 300 foot-pounds of torque so this originally had the 360 v8 in it and it now has um, a obviously the ALH it has a Jeep Cherokee AW4 automatic which I manually shift um, you'll get to see that here in the first clip and then that is fitted to a NP231 Dodge transfer case, which then goes out to the one ton axles with custom drive shafts. So it's pretty much a Frankenstein. Um, not much of the front end is original, but it, like I say, I'll, I'll get you guys some videos here. It really does very well for what it is. So let's go ahead and go for a ride. All right, so, and this thing obviously isn't fast. It's way too heavy to have any decent acceleration time, but I did want to kind of go over, um, I've got my torque converter lock up here, but in first gear, it'll let me leave that lock so I can actually do a second gear shift right to a locked second gear. If I rev it up high enough, it will keep the boost up and gives me a, the most most decent acceleration I can get out of it so anyway if you load it up a little with this turbo you can make boost enough up to 
plenty of room to go faster if I want to. So this is probably about the biggest hill I have coming into town in the morning. Um, I'm running about 66 degrees outside and hopefully you can see the gauges with the backlight on here or off I mean. Anyway we're right about 180 degrees at the bottom of the hill and it was right there around 800 degree EGTs. Now it's spiking up to a thousand there as we're climbing the hill just about halfway up it here but as you can see um, we're pulling about 20 a little over 20 pounds of boost and we're just hitting 1100 degree EGTs and the coolant temp has come up about four or five degrees it'll probably come up yeah there's seven degrees but we are just just up the hill now and everything will back off here and then it'll just start cooling down again so that's a pretty normal normal temp rise for me with it no AC on cooler morning so then here cruising flatland will be down to 10 pounds of boost and it'll drop below a thousand degrees for the EGTs and then yeah that coolant temp will go back down to about 180 so that's just a pretty good hill right there to give you an example okay this is probably about the flattest road I can find around here I got so many hills and everything but anyway I just wanted to kind of give you some numbers here just cruising flatland 65 mile an hour with the cruise on um, it runs at about 10 pounds of boost just over 900 degree GTs and yeah it pretty much stays right there just over 180 what the thermostat set at for coolant and it's about 82 degrees outside I've got the air conditioner on and the intake air temps are about 93 so about 10 10 degrees over the outside temps all right so now I'm on my way home it's about as hot as it's gonna get today I think it's about 86 and just coming down this hill and about to go up so I've dropped to 181 degree coolant temps and I was down about 750 degree EGT so got the cruise set about 71 and gonna pull this first hill here these are the same ones I usually get videos of towing um, definitely a pretty good workout here it goes from about 45 hundred foot elevation up to just over 5,000 so it's a pretty good climb up and down twice and just definitely pushing pushing most of my rigs so the air conditioners on it's taken just almost 20 pounds of boost to pull this first hill and as you can see we've gone up up to 190 coolant temp there and we were just over 1100 degree EGT so overall really impressed with this turbo um, for how small it is it's staying pretty dang cool um, everything else is staying in check you can see there I went up to 105 degree intake air temps so about 20 degrees above outside air temps um, my intake system is working really well keeping those temperatures down and now there's another big downhill into a river bottom and then it'll be a big climb up there to the other other side all right into this next hill um, we're up just over 1100 degree EGTs now and again 20 pounds of boost 
going to get right back up to 190 again and we get a little bit of a flat spot here and then we'll we'll go up again so I'll get that right at the end there as we're getting to the hottest part just starting the last big stretch of this climb it's probably uh, almost a mile long maybe a little longer than that so we're still at 190 just like usual I don't get a cool down at all before this stretch and we're gonna go up another two or three hundred feet here so we're getting over we're still not hitting 1200 degree EGTs though so really pretty amazed with this turbo um, there isn't a lot of wind today that can be a big factor for me a lot of times but it's just cooking right along here and it looks like we might get just over 195 maybe coolant temp Yep, there we go, but we are at the top of the hill and we're on our flatland now So shouldn't be any more Any more issues there. We did not break 1200 degrees on the EGTs and Everything's cooling back down So yep, it's doing awesome So hopefully that gives you guys kind of an idea of how this thing's going. Like I say, it's it's not fast, but it pretty much holds speed. I have yet to get enough headwind to have to back off because of too much boost or EGTs just continually. So far, um, I'm still getting a little bit of a driveline vibration up towards 75 mile an hour, but um, really just haven't needed to drive it much over 70. It's kind of its happy place, and I'm pretty good with that. It's a big truck to be going any faster than that anyway. So, um, anyway, yeah, hopefully it will just keep doing what it's doing because I I couldn't be more pleased with the outcome of this thing. Um, it It's doing everything I was expecting it to do and far more than that. Um, I wasn't sure it'd even be much of a highway rig and I'm almost over 10,000 miles on this thing since swapping it so yeah it's been been a little bit of work but but I'm really enjoying it so anyway thanks for watching guys and hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of what you could do with a TDI and something in a bigger rig like this so see you next time